Good evening, Belgium. And this is uh, broadcasting from uh, Oregon in the United States. It's uh, January 16th, Thursday. And we've had, this is, we haven't had a broadcast here on the Jesuits derooting de- the Reformation because of the unholy holidays. So uh, welcome to the broadcast, uh, uh, Yerk. Thank you very much, uh, Walt. And uh, first of all, also from my part, a little bit of apologies to our uh, fellow listeners. And uh, I know that our radio program got uh, quite interesting for many people, and they are looking for a new episode. And uh, I want to apologize on the one hand because um, I'm a wine merchant, and uh, in the before this unholy Christmas time, I was very busy doing my work, so I couldn't do any studies on the subject. Then, of course, came the holidays, and then I made a uh, wonderful video uh, on YouTube uh, called The Only Thing I Want for Christmas is the Truth About Christmas, and that I published on the 25th of December, and uh, it really hit like a bomb. It had uh, more than 400 views within a few days, so people uh, were really uh, into that uh, subject also, instead of just buying gifts for anyone. Uh, so I put a little bit on that, and um, well, shortly after Christmas, I have had um, a little, uh, I have experienced a little problem uh, with my eye. One morning I woke up, and my left eye was kind of dizzy, you know, when you when you open your eyes, you have some kind of dizzy, misty view, then you rub your eyes once, and it's okay, but um, rubbing my eyes was hurting, and the misty view didn't go away. And when I looked up to the left and looked up to the right, I had pain in my eye. But I'm, well, <laughs> I don't trust any doctor, you know. Uh, uh, I hate the pharmacy, uh, the pharmaceutical industry, which is only there to treat our diseases as that they get as long that they get, uh, that they get money out of us. Because when you heal, the diseases you don't get money yeah? and the pharma industry is that way and I hate everything about the pharma industry uh, vaccinations I think everybody is a little bit aware of this stuff I'm also vegan since two and a half years I uh, started a complete uh, animal produce free diet two and a half years ago and it did me very good I lost a lot of weight and I felt very good in my body yeah okay but Coming back to, um, I think it was the 27th of, uh, of December when I woke up with that pain in my eye. And I said, okay, I'm not going to do anything. First of all, we are between holidays, no doctors open anyway, and uh, I don't run to a doctor when I have a little, uh, little something. Uh, so I just left it, but it, it didn't go any better. And then we had, we had the 2nd of January, and my mother said, well, now go to the doctor and, and, uh, and check it out because it doesn't seem to go away. So I went to the doctor, my, uh, just my normal house doctor, because I called an eye doctor, and they said they won't give me an appointment if I don't come from a house doctor. So you have to be transferred from the one doctor to the other one. That's so two people can make money out of your misery, of course. And I went to my house doctor, and he said, yeah. I'm, uh, he, he looked at my eye, and he said, yeah, that's an infection. You have an eye infection. I'm going to give you some eye drops, and you have to use these eye drops three times a day for three days, and then it will be going, going away. So I get, went to the pharmacy, got the eye drops, uh, put them in three times a day, one day, second day, th- th- uh, third day, and Sunday, even the fourth day, and I had absolutely no um, betterness in anything. So it didn't, it didn't get well. So the Monday I returned to the doctor. <clears throat> he looked again at it again and said, okay, um, I'm going to write you a description to an eye doctor. You can go there already this noon. So I went there. He did a deep examine of my eyes, examination of my eyes uh, with all the things that I can view, and uh, he was very concerned about it, and he made an appointment for me in the hospital the next day uh, to see a neurologist. So the next morning I went to the hospital and uh, saw the neurologist, and the next morning it was, uh, it was about noon, and she made some eye tests with me, took some blood tests, and made an appointment for me the next day to come back. Uh, and they wanted to take uh, some spinal fluid, you know. 
and um, they did that. So I was hospitalized for the whole day because then you have to stay in bed all day after that you do that. Uh, no, but that was the first first day. The second day I just came back for more tests, and the third day I had to be hospitalized uh, for the spinal fluid test. And <clears throat> then I got under, uh, under, under a scanner also the second day. The third day I had the spinal test, and the fourth day I went to another hospital for two uh, for two MR scans. And then uh, Monday I haven't had any news of anything. And then Tuesday. This week, in the evening, the doctor called me with the results, and the result was that I have multiple sclerosis. So my uh, in my left eye, the nerve from the eye is uh, infected, um, has a plaque on it, and that plaque is the result of multiple sclerosis. And for the people who do not know what multiple sclerosis is, um, that is an autoimmune disease that is uh, not healable. There is no cure for that disease. It's always lethal. You can soften the uh, well, things that come up, uh, but eventually you will always get uh, handicapped by... Uh, sitting in a, uh, in a wheelchair, can't move your le legs anymore, can't move your arms anymore, and uh, most of the times you will suffer the death of suffocation because your lungs won't, start, won't, won't will stop working, and it's not a very nice death. And because there's no cure for this sickness, never has been, never will be, it's like lupus, you know, you know these autoimmune diseases. Um, the new year starts very, very nice for me. A little bit of sarcasm here. But anyway, you know, it's so strange. I, I, I just wanted to share that with everybody because the last year has been so good to me. Um, I, have, I have found Jesus last year. I have found my faith. I stopped smoking. I found the desire back or the, or the lust back to do my work definitely, uh, effectively. I finally got for a big part out of debt. I'm still not completely out of debt, but for a big part I got out of debt. Everybody was so rosy for the moment. Then this new year starts, and then you get news like this, and it's like like all my life, when uh, it starts to get positive, out of nowhere comes a hammer, dropping on your head and pushing you back in the hole you just crawled out on. And, um, of course, this is also one of the reasons why I didn't do any study on the Jesuit Jerusalem derooting the Reformation the latest weeks because I have had, with, with this eye, big troubles reading, um, uh, reading documents, reading books, re reading, uh, reading stuff on the Internet or, or wherever uh, to prepare for, for a good... Uh, broadcast. So that is why I have been silent and uh, probably will be a little bit uh, longer than right now because I first have to deal with this news. That is something that uh, Walt didn't know. I'm just sharing this with all of you. Like I shared this with Walt, he had no idea that that was coming. So I'm going to take a little break now and ask him what he can, what he thinks of this and maybe he has some advice or I don't know, clean opinion on that. Walt. Well, you know, it's kind of uh, this walk through life is a day by day. And, uh, of course, I have a good friend who's a former, he's, uh, he used to be a hang glider, hang glider pilot, and he's got multiple sclerosis. But it's not in his eye, it's uh, he's having a hard time, he has a hard time walking. And um, my question to you is, have they, uh, has it affected your balance? No, 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 not yet. But uh, you say that your friend has a hard time walking, and he will have a harder time walking, and he will eventually end up in a chair. Mm -hmm. That's the point. You know, I, I, with a lot of people, it starts in the eye. With a lot of other people, it starts in the back. Uh, with a lot of other people, it's just one leg or another leg. Uh, uh, it, it, comes, it comes in... Uh, in, in, in um, how you say that, in parts, you know, 
um, this time it's my left eye, maybe next time it's my right eye, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's my left arm, maybe it's my, my leg, maybe it's my, my back that gives up. Um, there are so, so many uh, uh, things that I have to read now on this, uh, on this sickness uh, to, to, to have to deal with it because I'm 47 and, and I, I, I want to live on, you know. But um, the, there are um, different uh, symptoms uh, when that uh, sickness um, comes, comes out in you. So with me, it is the eye that is with, uh, with many people like that. And um, with another people, yeah, it's, it's maybe the leg or, or whatever. <sighs> When I first was confronted with multiple sclerosis, I was about 16 years old because I was working in a, in a home for old people um, that, that were took, uh, taken care of. I was one of the caretakers then. I, I did a vacation job there because I did a practicum. I don't know the English word for that, but it's just when you go two weeks out of school and you go into a company or whatever and work there to to to, to rub in that and so uh, I, I did that for two weeks in school time and I liked it that much caring about the people but I said I want to work here in the summer vacation if it's allowed to and then they allowed me to and I worked there and when I worked there I got to know a woman who was 45 years sitting in a wheelchair. Now when you work in an elderly home where the people are the average age is about 85 or something like that and you see some, someone who is 45, you ask yourself, why are you here? So I asked her, and she said, I have multiple sclerosis, and there is no other institution that could take care of me, so I'm here with all the old people. And she explained to me what multiple sclerosis is, how, her, uh, how the disease infested in her, and how it developed in her. And, uh, yeah, eventually she came uh, into, uh, into the wheelchair, and, and she said, yeah, I'm already... Um, uh, absolutely feeling this from the uh, from the waist down, so it, it always goes higher, higher up until I will suffocate and, and uh, die of suffocation. Well, it's, it's you know, listen, uh, I'm a little bit familiar with this because uh, my friend went all the way down to San Francisco because uh, because it does deal with circulation. And but the the point I'm I'm going to make here, York, uh, for t- to anybody that's listening and yourself. I mean, I'm going through this myself. You know, there, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. And I'm 69 years old. And I have another friend. Uh, we have a brother, uh, Mike, who's on uh, dialysis. And uh, his kidneys quit, you know. And uh, But uh, one of the things that brings on a lot that's going it, it, to accelerate it is, is, um, is a lot of worry. Uh, in other words, uh, I mean, as a brother in Christ, uh, my, my, you know, I feel I feel the burden. I mean, this is kind of a shock to my to myself also because I I'm a little bit familiar with uh, multiple sclerosis, you know. Um, but, but you know, my friend, I, well, matter of fact, uh, you you've had a chance to visit with Mark. Uh, you know, we he lives up in Pacific City. But one thing I can say, Mark Mark is not a Christian. But he's not an atheist, and um, uh, he always uh, uh, it, it probably affects me uh, a little bit uh, more than it should. Because, but he always has got a smile on his face, and he's, he hasn't even begun to quit. I mean, he gets up every morning and he goes through exercises, and and uh, you know, and it's it's slowly, and he's still got beads and stuff. But what I'm trying to try to say today is what I'm trying to say is your is today. We got to live today to the fullest, because uh, what we see happening in the world is ex, is accelerating, and the fact that one thing that you do have, you York, is you have the facilities God has given you a good mind, and you still have that mind so. We're going to take it one day at a time. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm giving up or something. I'm just saying, when you, if you knew my life, how it's how it how it went all the way through up to here, and you know about well, our listeners don't know, but you know about that. Uh, uh, 
at the end of 2012, I took my mother in because uh, she got her leg amputated in Germany and didn't have the possibility to live on her own again. She was uh, retired and uh, she didn't um, financially could make amends. Uh, uh, fix, fix, fix the end at the end of the money. There was always at the end of the month there was always no money left, so she had to work. Now with her leg uh, amputated, she couldn't do that anymore. So I told her, please come to me to Belgium, and I will take care of her. And now I get the news that I will have a disease that maybe she will have to take care of me. You know, I mean, I don't have to. I, I don't. I don't want to share all my life here because then we're going to do a 24-hour show and everybody's getting bored. And says, yeah, I have my problems too, and I understand that. I'm no special, I'm no anywhere, but this is something that affects me for the moment right very, very hard. Yeah. And uh, of course, the news is just two and a half days old, so give me the credit of, uh, well, not so long having had time to deal with that information. Yeah, ab- absolutely. You know, you know, I just, I, just want to, I, I, I just wanted to take this opportunity to tell our listeners also why there is not a new broadcast for the moment right now. And I hope of their uh, of their understanding, and I hope a little bit of my fellow Christians uh, that they include me in their prayers, that maybe I can live for ten, fifteen, twenty years without that um, uh, that uh, disease infesting in a way that will um, take me away from the opportunity to take care of my mother and take care of myself. I, I do a job as a wine merchant where I have to drive cars, I have to wear, I have to. Uh, I have to uh, carry wine boxes and all that stuff, and I have to be very active in my job, uh, and, uh, and I'm self-employed. And when I'm self-employed and I fall here in Belgium, I fall from self-employedness to nothing. I get nothing. I get nothing. The social system here in Belgium is good for everyone who is working in a, in a company or whatever, uh, is a worker or, or a blue-collar worker. And surely when you are... Uh, State official, I mean, uh, how do you call that? Um, people working for the government, you know. Then you get everything shoved up, you shoved up your ass. When mm-hmm. you're when you're self-employed, you get nothing, absolutely nothing. I mean, here in Belgium right now, I just give you an idea. When you have been working for 45 years as self-employed person, the minimum pension that you get is 750 euros. That's about a thousand bucks. Yes. After 45 years of working. That's what you get. And don't forget, Walt, uh, you fell almost out of the clouds when I told you that news. Otherwise, we have a 21% VAT value added tax on everything we buy. 21% for the moment. So, Belgium, and you can look that up on the internet, is one of the highest taxed countries in the world. But what he's saying, listeners, is, is 21%. Every time you buy uh, buy a, a product, it, it's 21% of it is taxes, yes. Sales tax, yeah. It's, it's sales tax, right, right. And, um, VAT, yeah, value added tax. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, uh, you know, um, your guy... Kind of a little, you know. I'm going to have to get a little used to this myself. You know, this when you take in new information, you know. And I, I, I've been feeling some of the, the pangs of, uh, you know, getting old isn't. I've heard this years ago, and it didn't mean that much to me. But uh, uh, getting old ain't for sissies. And, uh, but you know, I, I, you know, what is, what has been going through my mind is some of the books I've read lately. I, I read a book. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the execution by hunger, and uh, and this was the seven million people that were uh, from the Ukraine. From the Ukraine, that they lost seven million people. And uh, I read about the villages and, and and the death that was all over. And then uh, then I, yesterday I had a book given to me, and I just started it. It's called uh, the Forgotten Highlander. It's an incredible World War II story of a survival in the Pacific. Seven hundred and he was in prison for seven hundred and forty days, and you know. And then I just got done reading. Uh, uh, um, I actually this is an audio book. It's uh, coming out of the ice by Victor Herman, 
and he spent 45 years in Russia. And uh, what's on my mind now and with what you just shared with me is, is what some people have been through. 45 years in Russia, and he spent 10, 10 years in a gulag, and then he was exiled to Siberia. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. What and and then uh, you and I have did some research in in, in, the, in the the killing fields that were set up in World War One and World War Two. So you know, as as we journey, as we journey through life. You know, Psalms 23, uh, everybody has just read the Bible, has, uh, has read Psalms 23, but it's, I'll tell you something, it's, uh, it refers to each and every one of us because each and every one of us have got to walk that valley. And now that we know the truth and we see this, this World War I and World War II as a valley of death, you know, and... Uh, so even under the circumstances today, uh, we 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 have a lot to be thankful for and and be blessed, you know that we you know. Uh, uh, but I, as time goes on, and especially the last you know this last month in my life, uh, when I see how big this 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 deception and the suppression of history. It sometimes is overwhelming to myself, you know. I mean, I I get a little weak need in this hearing your battles now, and then, uh, and then, and then, and then our brother Mike, who's on uh, dialysis, and and uh, you know, so I, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll, you know, I I appreciate the honesty and the fact that you want to share because. Uh, uh, there was just quite a few people have been visiting the Jesuit, uh, derooting the, the Reformation. And so, anyway, that's I, that's about what I have to say. Uh, if you want to share some more, yeah, you know, I don't want to sound crappy. I, I I'm not afraid of death since I know Jesus. That's right. That's right. I'm not afraid of death, but to know how you're gonna die. That's something very different. And that the way that too is being made so difficult, that's something else. Yep, yes. And that's really, and that really, really is, is, is making sense of the speech. Your health is so important, you don't know what you got until you lose it. That, 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 that's, that's right. I'm 47 and a half years old. I never went to the hospital after my birth for anything. I was never really sick. I was sick as a child. I had to use a child's uh, sicknesses, like, like uh, every child's mums and, and all this stuff. But, but there's, there's no problem. But I never went to the hospital. I always had a good health. And then you wake up one morning with a problem in your eye and say, oh, okay, there's a problem in my eye, but oh, okay. Have, have, have you lost the vision? Four parts, yeah. So uh, it was like I had uh, mist before my eye. You know, like when you when you open your eyes for the first time in the morning, uh-huh. then you can't see clear. And then you rub your eyes once, and then you can then you can see clear. Well, okay, I rubbed and I couldn't see clear. I had the same mushy vision mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all the time. And, and now in the and now in the left eye, it's getting better and better. That's what I told you. I was today, I was today at the at the eye doctor's test. I don't know if I told you that already. Mm-hmm. Um, I was today at the eye doctor's test again, and uh, I had uh, when you have this board, then when you see the letters on, on a different uh, dif- uh, difference, so of the farther away or, or smaller, I had ten of ten, uh, ten on ten this time. Last week I couldn't, uh, I couldn't five or six, I couldn't see. This time I could see them all, and my eye made very, very much progress. It is really getting better. And, and that's what the sickness does. It comes, it gives you a push, and then it goes back again. And then it gives you another push. And that push can be on the same place, or the push can come on another place, like it can be on your legs or whatever. And sometimes this stays for long, sometimes it goes away, sometimes it even doesn't go away anymore. And the first thing that I started reading about when I, when I, got, um, when I got the info that I got multiple sclerosis, 
is that I looked it up on the internet, um, what is there written on it, and I found uh, an article in the German, uh, on a German page that I have advice to everybody who speaks German to read that. It is Zentrum der Gesundheit, that means Center of the Health. Um, that's a wonderful, wonderful website uh, for vegetarians and vegans and also very good on health issues. And they mentioned a study from the University of Toronto where when people with MS were, uh, were given high doses of vitamin D, that their symptoms uh, decreased and, and went away back. But um, they were forced uh, 10,000 IEs per day where the normal doctor doesn't advise more than 4,000 and they increased it to 10,000 a day over a period of a month or something. I have to read that study for myself. I haven't done that yet. I haven't had the time because I'm spending all days in the hospital in the last days and also here and there I have to work a little bit. So this is my actually first little bit free hour that I use for this broadcast to do that. Uh, I'm going into that study and I'm going to do that also. I want to take this vitamin D and because, you know, this vitamin D that brings me to another point. Around the equator, when you look there, there is no multiple sclerosis. They don't have it there because they have sunlight. We in the northern hemisphere, we don't have that much sunlight here, and we don't expose ourselves to sunlight anymore. And sunlight makes uh, gives us the possibility um, to um, uh, to make vitamin D. When you when you expose yourself to the sun for 15 minutes a day. Uh, just your upper body part, your, your arms and your face and your upper body part for 15 minutes a day to make enough vitamin D to survive for even a long time, even through the winter when there is no vitamin D that you can make. But, you know, with all the chemtrails uh, that they do, they block the sun from us. Mm-hmm. And, and the sun here now doesn't have the same working again anymore. So we, 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 are, we are taking away our vitamin D, which is vital which is absolutely vital for us to, to survive. Well, so, well, well tell me that you, you said yes. that uh, we got a little, a little echo here, uh, that, that it isn't, they don't have multiple sources on the equator? No, we're on the equator, no. no. Al- almost nothing. Is that right? Yeah, almost nothing. Because mm-hmm. they have sunlight all day. Mm-hmm. Say, do you have a headset on? Yeah. You know, uh, Does it make a bad sound? Because uh, to me, it sounds good. Well, you, you sound good, but when I talk, you you see, hear an echo? No, no. no. I hear you very, very well, very well. Now, I just wanted to say, I'm going to, I'm going to get myself into that study and, and, uh, and into that into that sickness. But you know, the point is just that it's that that I find. Um, it's so uh, annoying that uh, my mother had this, this incident with her handicap and I took her in and to say, I'm going to take care of you. And then last year when she came to me, uh, when she came out of the hospital the second time, end of 2012, and she already lived with me, she came out of the hospital and she weighed 31 or 32 kilos. Yeah, She was really skin over bones. She's only a meter 64, but 31 kilos is really, really nothing. And last year, we had such, we had had such a good time. I cooked for her that well, and she's really, she said, "Oh God, stop feeding me! I can't fit my pants anymore." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe she gained five or six kilos, you know. But <laughs> she loves to exaggerate, and uh, you know, women, uh, oh, 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 my pants doesn't fit. And yeah, yeah, what doesn't matter? You're in a wheelchair all day. Who sees it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, and, and she really she she felt good and she laughed again and, and everything was fine. And then and then you get that news and that is something yeah you know, hard to cope with at the moment. I I, I I I don't make this broadcast to whine or or to get uh, empathy or whatever. I just want to tell people how things in your life can take a turn. Even though I was so happy last year with finding Jesus, which absolutely made it for me. I, I pray every day since um, since I found Jesus and I repent. And um, uh, I watch uh, a lot of Bible study videos. I read a lot of the Bible whenever I can. And, uh, and uh, I, I follow these uh, channels on, on YouTube um, that are real Christian t- channels. And um, I, I love the word of Jesus. 
and that gave me so much, uh, how, how can you say that, uh, confidence um, to make it and, and, and to, yeah, actually have a good life. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then you get a hammer like this, you know. That, that, that's all I'm saying, you know. It's, uh, it's just when, when everything seems to go good and then you just get a hammer out of nothing that puts you just back in your hole where you, where you crawled out from. That's the feeling that I got. So um, I, I just want to tell our, our listeners, okay, there will be more broadcasts, but uh, when they listen to this, they hope, hopefully, hopefully will understand why there will be a little pause and that I have to uh, gather my mind a, a little bit and, and, and focus, on, and focus on, on myself for a moment also and see how I can deal with it. Because, you know, uh, when I asked the doctor how, uh, what, what, what are my expectations to live, she said, well, I don't have a... Um, I don't have a crystal ball uh, that I can say uh, this long, two years or 15 or 20 years or whatever. She said, but we have now uh, in the pharmacy already, uh, we made so much progress that, um, uh, yeah, we can prolong life much longer than 20 years ago. And she said also it's possible that even the next 10 years you, will, you won't have any um, any symptoms anymore? We, we just make this what, what, what we did today. Um, this, uh, I get cortisone now. Uh, is it the same in English? Cortisone, yeah. Yes, that medicine. Yeah, I get yes. cortisone. I get cortisone infusion um, five times, uh, five days. Uh, today was the second day. So, um, uh, and then also should help putting the symptoms down. And she will, uh, tomorrow I have to do another scan for my spine uh, to see if uh, the plaques already infested in my spine also. So I hope that that is not the case because if that is the case, then it is really hard and uh, probably the next attack will come on the legs or in my back and uh, that will be probably the end of it. But um, I, I don't know that yet, so I'm, I'm going to that uh, scan tomorrow, an MRI scan, full body scan on the spine to see that. And of course, do not think about that MRI scans give you cancer. <laughs> that's, that's also something else. You know, the, the hardest thing the hardest thing for me was uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, my son went to play snooker with a friend in the town next to, to my town here, and he said, "When I'm done snookering, I come visit you." And he went there with his um, with his motorcycle, and he called me and said, "Well, Dad, you won't believe it. My motorcycle is just four days out of the garage." They fixed it, and now it stands here again. I can't drive. Can you pick me up? And uh, I was sitting here with a friend uh, who visited me when, when I gave him the news. He quit his work directly, came up to me, visited me, and we spent the evening together talking and, and uh, playing poker together online, trying to have some fun and put our minds to anything else. And at about 10.30 in the evening, my son called me and said, yeah, my, my, my motorcycle uh, quit on me again. Can you pick me up? So... I went there to pick him up, and he already jumped in my car quite mad because of that experience, because he had, had a very fine day up to then. And I said, I'm very sorry, son, but I have to tell you the truth, and I have to tell you news about my eye and my, my, my sickness that developed from it. And he said, yeah, well, uh, what's it? what is it? And I said, well, I'm sorry, and uh, I drove, but uh, I held his hand, and I said, I'm sorry. When I, when I told you that I had cancer, it would, it would be good news. And he didn't understand, and I said, well, cancer is something that you can heal. But I have MS, and that is a sickness that you cannot heal. So he also, of course, he, he took it very hard. And uh, but, but I had to tell him the truth. I couldn't stick it behind the, behind the mountain. I couldn't, I couldn't stick with it, uh, not to tell him the truth, you know. It's very important for me to let, let my son know the truth about me. Right. And it's, it's just hard to share that with, uh, with the people. I mean, with my mother, it's, it's, it's the same. Uh, well, it, like, like the doctor said, though, it might, you might have 10 years before it will flare up. Yeah. And Because uh, you, you haven't had any back problems or leg problems so far, right? No, not so far. Yeah, I mean, five years ago or something, I don't know. I don't remember anywhere. It's four, five, maybe six years ago, I've had a period... 
um, where my where my back was hurting that much that for five or six weeks uh, five or six weeks I couldn't I couldn't move but I thought it was a hernia. Now I know it could also have been eventually probably uh, the first sign of MS. I don't know, but uh, for the rest I never had have had any problems. No, mm-hmm. but that, that's what I said. I never went to hospitals. I, I, I was all, I was always a healthy person. And surely the last two and a half years since I turned vegan, I have had two calls in that time uh, during uh, during two and a half years, each lasting two or three days. You know, mm-hmm. for the rest I don't have it because I eat a lot of fruit, I eat a lot of vegetables, I eat a lot of raw, and uh, only vegan food and uh, only healthy. And now I'm going to ask myself, what all for? If Satan want to get you, he's going to get you. Well, you can do whatever you want. And that is something that gives me a little bit power because I said, well, Satan wants to take my power away. And he's chosen something very mean by giving me the sickness. Maybe he wants to turn me away from Jesus and I will not allow that. Mm-hmm. Well, well, that's, you know, when somebody is facing this, I mean, I know, I know a little bit, like last April in my life, within two days, I couldn't walk. I had to check myself into a motel because I couldn't, I couldn't operate where I lived. And so I, I kind of understand, you know, uh, a, a, a little bit. I mean, in other words, and plus I'm, but I'm 69 years old. But in other words, what that little episode did teach me is uh, is what you you've been trying to express. I mean, you you don't realize your health. I mean, until you can't tie your shoes, you know. And uh, and uh, and and I've I've been through a little revelation here this last week. Uh, you know, um, uh, I mean, I I'm 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 not. Uh, I I went I'm will we'll have to maybe have a broadcast on this in the future as I as I progress in this but uh, I mean I went to God's medicine as far as in other words I'm not uh, I'm not uh, changing my diet because I for longevity and it's the same thing with you that you can be thankful for that you have your head you see in other words. In other words, with what we see in the world today in the dubbing down and all the vaccines and the GMO and the foods and, and all the fast foods and processed foods, we have seen uh, the attack on the mind and the body. And some people, it, 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 it attacks just the body. And some people, just the mind. You know, and, and, and with what's going on, with the great amount of deception that is going on, you know, uh, you, you know, the medical science are, are very um, the, the research, but even even the medical doctors uh, don't have just like the doctor said. She she said she doesn't have a, a crystal ball, you know, and um, you know, so you know. You, you, one thing that we can all learn from this, I think that I'm learning from my little episode is we got to live today to the fullest and don't count on tomorrow. I mean, it's, you know, you have to live one day at a time and especially in the age we live in, we have never lived in a, in an age where we've had the world so godless and so it's, it's, and so twisted up with all these lies with the internet and the movies and the TV, I mean, and, uh, you know, in the, in the fact that, you know, that our history has been suppressed from us, you know, you know, so, you know, uh, uh, let this be, a uh, um, to all of us, your, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I agree with you. In other words, uh, your health, and, and to, yes, yes, uh, and um, uh, so you know, I, I, my, my blessings are with you, and God bless you, and and uh, and it's uh, you know, there something could come out of this. We, you know, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring us. So, 
let's uh, let's uh, keep our mind clear and 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 uh, and, and pray and and uh, kept persevering with the truth. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah thanks. Thanks anyway that you gave me the opportunity to put this on. Uh, on our radio show. I mean, that's probably enough what the people expect when they read the title and listen to this. But I think that's also some, sometimes uh, very, uh, very important to share uh, parts of his life, um, how how people come to this work or, or what infects them in this work. And um, also, I, I, I think this is for everybody maybe a, a possibility to look on himself and see well, what next to help do I have? Because this is really the most important thing that we have. My problem right now that I have to face is that my health is in, in, imparted, that I will have to live with this, that from the moment on I'm chronically sick, where up to a week ago I thought I was the finest man in the world. Mm-hmm. Except for a little... I know it, 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 it's just an infection in the eye. They knew it was an infection in the eye. I don't care for an infection in the eye. Well, but the reason of the infection, that's the problem. And that's, uh, that's something. So everybody has maybe to be a little bit vigilant and uh, say, okay, well, look up the symptoms on the Internet. Uh, what symptoms are there for um, multiple sclerosis? And, and, and check yourself. Just go to the doctor and do a test. Uh, see if you have it. Uh, it's um, it's also your heritable, uh, uh, inheritable uh, sickness. You have to know that. So um, when you have that, okay, that is not a nice sentence to know. But then at least you know what you're facing every day. And uh, like Walt said, in, enjoy every day. It is was your effort. It was effort. Was your as if it was your last. Well, absolutely do that because. Um, we are not giving the next day. We are also should, we always should enjoy the day we are living in right now. We are living in the present. We don't live in the past, and we don't live in the future. We live at this moment, this second, and the next second it can all be over. Um, but I want to encourage everybody to take a good look at their health because that's the most important thing that we have. That's above money. That's above everything. When you don't have your health, you don't have nothing. You don't even have trust in yourself anymore and things you do. And now every day to me is a gift. Every day that I woke up, wake up with, without a new problem is to me a God-given gift. And that's what I have to take out of this lesson that Satan wants to teach me. Right. In other words, that the emotion, I mean, health is important. And what you've seen, I think it's even worse here in the United States than it is in Europe. But in, in America, we are Americans, we are 70% overweight. Yeah, not, not only that you are overweight, but you have the problem with Monsanto, uh, which is in America much uh, worse than in Europe for the moment. Uh, you don't even have, uh, they are going even to ban uh, the um, uh, that that the uh, GMO foods have to be labeled, uh, and then you don't even know if you eat GMO food or you don't. Um, now they are in um, in, in uh, uh, how do you say that? In uh, well, they are uh, they are in talks with the EU about this new free trade agreement on uh, in America and the EU, and that is just and just for opening Monsanto to Europe completely, because here we are against GMO for the moment for a big part. Not not all of it, because it is allowed in animal feed. So when you eat animal produce, like pork or, or, or cattle, um, these beasts are fed with uh, genetically modified corn and uh, genetically modified soy, which is not their natural food anyway. Um, but um, they are fed with that, and the result is that that manifests like the proteins also in the meat, and when you eat that, you will also get this GMO stuff in your body. And um, this whole uh, free trade agreement between the, America, between the USA and, um, uh, and, and the European Union is just about to open all the doors for Monsanto here to welcome them in. Uh, Monsanto is going to be the worldwide provider of food in the future. That's mm-hmm. their goal, and they are going there. They are going there because nobody stops them, because everybody's bright. 
Mm -hmm. in Monsanto was founded by a Knight of Malta and is run by the Jesuits. But of course, uh, in Monsanto, Syngenta, BASF, uh, Bayer, all these companies, all these companies, everything is run by the Jesuits. It's like it's like uh, Laurie said to you one time on the Laurie's Talk Radio. Well, you see a Jesuit under every stone. Yes, that's because I turn every stone, and there actually sits one. Yes, yes, there is there is a Jesuit behind, and that's the... You know, one thing I want to say about the 70% obesity, something that really hit me, you know, I, I, I'm almost 70 years old, and uh, I look back in my life, I look back when I was in high school and when I was in junior high. As a matter of fact, I've got a picture here. I've got a picture of uh, my sixth grade class. I think there's two two students there that are, are a little overweight. But uh, how can you tell you're not in good health? Seventy percent of America is obese. Now, 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 you know, one thing I've learned, you know, uh, I went to the grocery store the other day I and mean, I had this revelation. I've, I've been toying with this. I've known this. I've got a champion juicer because one thing you do need for what I'm doing is you need a tool and you need juice. And what is it? Why the reason for juice? Because the, our food has been genetically, there's not as much nutrients in the, in the, in our vegetables, and so you need a high concentration of vegetables and the juice. But the, yeah. point I'm, the point I'm trying to bring out here is this. I went to the check stand, and I said, walking, I've had a revelation now. In other words, when I see somebody overweight, you see, that's, that's a sign of, uh, I mean, in other words, 70%, not that many, I mean, can you imagine what that does? I mean, when I, like when I was in the military, I, I, can just, I can tell you I was in the military from 62 to 65, and I remember in our outfit, uh, we had a few obese in, in our outfit, but it was not 70%. And well, look, now, look at the look at the movies from the, from the Vietnam War or whatever. You almost see any obese people there. No, no. But the point is, as I come to the check stand the day before yesterday, and I and I had I went to the produce, and I had twenty four dollars worth of produce, various of produce, and the and the and the checker said to me, um, "Boy, you you've got a lot of good food here." In other words. Working in the check stand, she realized that, you know, that I didn't have, I had everything on the table was live. And so that I went to the store yesterday and I bought $34 worth. And, uh, and then when I make juice in the morning, you know, because you, you got to make, you, you, it's a change of life. It's a change of life. In other words, uh, you first and, you of, of, and you use a lot of greens, I hope, like yeah. celery and kale. Yeah. Well, it, well, it's it's like this. This is my juice this morning. I have a big bread bowl, and I have two carrots, uh, uh, about ten stalks of celery, a bunch of uh, a hand a hand bunch of. And every time I put this in the bread bowl, I have to wash it. I wash it, you know. Uh, spinach, a, lo a lime. I put a, a half of a lime in there, uh, and the rind and all. I cut it up. Skin and all. Huh? Skin and all. Yeah. And, and, then, and you, should, you should really use grapes and uh, grapefruit. Well, well, uh, right now I'm not mixing uh, juice. I'm not mixing the two together, fruit and... and um, no, 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 you shouldn't do that. And by the way, if I, can, if I can give you a little bit of advice, there's a wonderful, wonderful YouTube channel. I'm just looking at the video from her right now. That is called Fully Raw Christina. She's a girl, she's fully raw for eight years. And she has the most wonderful recipes on smoothies, well, on salad dressings and, that are fully raw. And, and it's absolutely incredible. I can only advise YouTube channel Fully Raw Christina. Really, really look it up. Everybody look it up. It's really great what she, what she has. Yes, yes, there's some tremendous videos out there. 
and this lady that got got me started. I mean, I had the tools, and I I I just haven't had the the initiative. And then uh, the, where I stay, there's a lady that she's suffering from uh, the, uh, that uh, disease that degenerates in your eye. And anyway, you, right now I'm I'm making juice for her and myself. You see, so but I have to juice once a day. Mm-hmm. And because I, I don't, in other words, I don't advise keeping the juice more than 24 hours. It should be a, it should be drank in the same day you you make it. And even the better you drink it, the fresher you drink it, the better it is. But yeah, about 24 hours you can keep it in a jar in your fridge. Yeah, yeah, I keep I keep it on ice. I I I I I keep it right on. I, I take it right in. But but the point I'm trying to make is I realize, in the testimonies, this lady. I'm excuse me. I should have her name. But um, um, she 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 she's been in it for t- over 25 years in, uh, in quite a testimony. But when I when I when I take that 12 ounces, I'm I'm giving this to my my landlady here. Um, I, I told her to only take three ounces at a time because this is for somebody that hasn't. This is live food. And what I was what, what I wanted to say is when I get my bread basket full of of my vegetables before I put them to the juicer, it's a colorful picture. Yeah, it's it's really it's really colorful, you know. You can and, never eat all that stuff that you put in the juicer and you can drink concentrated. No, no I, I would it, it, that whole bowl. I would have to spend all day uh, munching, and I would probably burn up more calories than I could get from get from it. <laughs> You know. Yeah, that's right. That's well, it, right. well, it, 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 well, it, it, it's 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 the it's the truth. See, yeah. but in other words, in other words, and, and all I I have to I have to share this with you. Your, I mean, I've already had a change in my urine. I mean, I I I, I go like a racehorse. I, I mean, I told you some time ago about my vegan lifestyle, and uh, you got interested from there on. Well, it? well, yeah, but see, I see, I ate raw four months. Eight years ago, and I, my wife and I, when I was married, I mean, we were, we made all our own bread, and we had, we had a juicer, and, 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 I, and I had a wife that took real good care of us, you know. But when I went out in the world and out on the truck, you see, that was a different world out there, and, and uh, you know, I, I ate myself into a, in, into, I plugged up my veins and stuff. But you see, see, with what I got can be cured, uh, like. Um, uh, uh, plug, plug, like plaque in your veins and stuff. I mean, all you, 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 all you, you, you need. To, but it's a, it's a revelation. You cannot cheat. You can, you cannot cheat. I mean, and and boy, I, I'm telling you, I already, I, she's already warned that that I will go through some days of detox, you know, because, uh, uh, but I are, I already feel uh, the difference in my energy level, and uh, and how, and how I think. You're a lot. You're a lot clear-headed when you're uh, when you're not over when you haven't overindulged in something that's not going to do you any good. Because when you eat it, when you overeat and yet you go out and eat and eat pizza, your body has to digest that and is getting nothing back for it. So you're actually going in the hole, and that's what causes obesity. I mean, the body doesn't know what to do with it, so it makes that's- fat with it. And even and even worse is uh, food that comes out of the microwave. Yes, that, because know. the microwave kills all Every. nutrition, all nutrition, even even water. When you warm up your coffee or your tea in your microwave, put it away. It's pure poison. Look it up on the internet. There's a lot of information on that. One of the most funny points that I found about about the microwave was I wasn't aware of that until 1989. The fall of the Berlin Wall and the fall of communism in the U- uh, in the USSR, microwaves were forbidden. Did you know that? Say that one more time. They were forbidden when? Until 1989, the end of communism, when the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, 1990, the communism fell. Until that time, microwaves were forbidden in the USSR. Is that right? Yes, yeah, I read that on the internet. Yeah, really. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's yeah. a, that's another. I mean, oh yes, it's the microwave. I mean, in other words, uh, I've they, it's up on the internet. I mean, they, if you microwave your all, if you feed plants water that are microwave, they'll die. They'll die. Yeah, absolutely. 
And uh, there was also done a test with 6,000 cats. Um, they were held in a cage, and uh, we, uh, in a cage, I mean, in the big rooms, uh, living there. They were not exposed to sunlight, I have to mention that also. And they were fed everything they wanted. Um, all meat, all fish, all veggies, everything they wanted. And they had to drink water and all that stuff. But everything they, get, they had was put in the microwave for 30 seconds. Within six weeks, all 6,000 cats were fat and dead. Yeah. Because there were no nutrients in that food. They ate and ate and ate because they didn't get full. But there was no nutrient in it, so they all died within six weeks. All the thousands of cats. You can look that study up on the internet, by the way. So mm. I say always do your own research. Don't believe me for anything. But um, mm. that's, that's that's really the case. Yeah, yeah. Just microwave the water. You put flowers in, in your, uh, that you that you water your plant with. Uh, buy a healthy plant. Water it with uh, my, water from the microwave. Buy by two plants, one you water normally, or one you water with water from the microwave, and you will see the results for yourself. So, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, it's well. Listen, Yerk, it's uh, we've getting down to an hour here, so yeah, I know. And the the, the uh, uh, intention, uh, how do you say that? Int- attention span of the people is not so long, so. We shouldn't over, overdo this, but uh, yes. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity. But I really wanted to uh, wanted to tell you this, and people, let me tell you this. I didn't tell Walt before that he knew uh, he knew it just for, uh, just like you on the same second when I put this here on the broadcast. I haven't mm-hmm. uh, told him before uh, something of that. I wanted it to be like this. I wanted this to be a kind of a confession and see what's coming out of it. And in the end of the day, I'm happy that I did it, and I hope you appreciate my input into this and uh, think about that and anybody who ever wants to contact me uh, you know on the site there is uh, the link to my YouTube how you can contact me and uh, you can always send me an email or contact me on Skype uh, if you like to so thank you very much for the opportunity tonight Walt okay doke and we'll we'll be getting the broadcast here uh, in the future we'll we might have one in a couple weeks I hope so. Okay. God bless, and we'll catch you later. Yeah. God bless you all.